This is lesson two of unit 13. In this lesson, we'll talk about temperature and pressure effects. Uh, remember, we were talking about solutions. And just like temperature and pressure effects have on pure solvents, they also have effects on solutions. So let's take a look at these. The first effect we'll take a look at is the temperature and how temperature affects the solubility of a solid, like salt or sugar. Here it says, as the temperature goes up, the solubility of a solid in the liquid also goes up. Now this is pretty logical. Now this is why you can dissolve more sugar at a higher temperature than at a lower temperature. And what we have here is we have a graph, rough sketch, where there's an increasing temperature on the bottom axis. And we see that different compounds will increase in their solubility as temperature increases. And this is almost uh, universal except for a few compounds. Here is a compound cerium sulfate that it doesn't hold for. Most other compounds, most other solids, this holds for. This is why whenever you want to brew uh, some tea, you want to do this at a higher temperature and then you would cool it back down because the solid at a higher temperature is more soluble. And uh, down here, I don't know if you can see this picture, but this much sugar can get dissolved at a high temperature versus a low temperature. In, a cold, in cold water, about 30 milliliters of uh, the solid cannot dissolve. So sugar is definitely more soluble at a higher temp, and that's the case for most solids. Now if we take a look at gases, as temperature increases, the solubility of a gas in a liquid actually decreases. And this is shown on the graph on the right. So again, we have temperature on the bottom axis. And for different gases, we have oxygen, carbon monoxide, methane. And as you increase the temperature, the solubility, for the most part, decreases for gases. This is why if you uh, heat up a, say, a bottle of soda, then the gas will leave and it'll become flat. Or if you want to keep the soda fizzy from going flat, you want to put it in your fridge. And this little picture of a fish here that doesn't look very happy is uh, uh, something called thermal pollution, which essentially is if lakes or rivers or bodies of water um, get warmed up, say if they're next to some sort of factory that produces heat or uses the water to cool itself, uh, as the temperature increases, the fish will die because oxygen is less soluble at a higher temperature, as you see here. Eventually, the oxygen becomes less and less soluble and fish cannot survive. So this is, can actually be uh, felt on the level of the environment. How about we take a look at the effect of pressure on solubility of a gas and really pressure applies only to gases or not only but usually to gases as we increase the pressure the solubility of a gas in a liquid increases now this is um, pretty simple essentially it's saying that if you increase the pressure you're essentially pushing the gas particles closer to the liquid so there are more gas molecules in contact with the liquid and more will get dissolved so this is pretty simple and that's why we have one of these fizz keepers. Remember these, what we saw? And these are able to increase the pressure uh, above the liquid and keep the fizziness in the drink. This is also why when you open a fresh bottle of soda, the gas bubbles suddenly appear. That's because you're decreasing the pressure and the solubility suddenly goes down. So you see all this gas coming out of the solution. So this effect is also pretty universal for gases. Now, uh, you may have done this before, and this Mentos and Diet Coke experiment uh, simply demonstrates how much gas there's actually dissolved in the soda. And all the gas is dissolved, and as soon as you put the mess, meth, uh, Mentos in there, uh, the gas comes out suddenly, and you have this huge fountain, and uh, this is just to show you that the gas isn't uh, kind of pressurized in the can itself, it's actually dissolved in the liquid. So try this or uh, take a look at some videos on it. So let's go ahead and define solubility and then we can talk about, uh, take a look at a graph that uh, expresses solubility. Solubility is how much solute is needed to form a saturated solution at some temperature. So if you want to talk about the solubility of sugar, for example, you have to mention the temperature because the temperature affects how much you can dissolve. 
and you have to tell us how much can dissolve at that temperature. And usually this is done in 100 grams of water, so you'll notice that sugar at 20 degrees Celsius is much less soluble than sugar at 100 degrees Celsius. You can dissolve about two and a half times uh, more sugar at 100 degrees Celsius. So this is what we mean by solubility, how much it takes to form a saturated solution at some temperature. Let's take a look now at a solubility curve, and this solubility curve essentially uh, will finish up with answering some questions. So what you see here is you see temperature along the x-axis, you see solubility along the y-axis, and this is for solids because these are most ion mostly ionic compounds. These are ionic. Remember, ionic compounds are solids, and so they uh, will increase in solubility as you increase the temperature. For different compounds, the effect is different, so it could be linear. For something like sodium chloride, it's pretty linear. For the others, like uh, potassium nitrate, it's much more exponential. And the idea here is if you put, say, at 40 degrees Celsius, if you decide to put 50 grams, uh, this is how much we're going to try to put, of a compound into water, if it's KNO3, now KNO3's solubility is about 64 at this temperature. So if you put 50 in, then that's below its solubility, and it's unsaturated. So if you're below the line, below would equal unsaturated. Now, if you're above the line, if you try to put, say, 80 grams of KNO3 into water, its solubility is only 64. It can only hold about 64. So this would be a saturated solution. If you're above the line, you are saturated. And that's essentially how we interpret uh, this graph. And you can also talk about, well, how much more can I dissolve? Or how much, if it's, if it's a super saturated solution, you can talk about how much will come out of solution, uh, how much more can it hold, and so forth. So let's see if we can answer a few questions here. And the question is this. Looking at the solubility curve above, will 50 grams of the following compounds be saturated or unsaturated at 45 degrees Celsius? So we're going to look at 45 degrees Celsius, 50 grams for both KCl and KNO3. I'll have to revert back to the previous slide, so take a look at that. So what we have is we're operating at 45 degrees Celsius, which is right here, so at this point. And then we're trying to put 50 grams in there, so at this point. So at 45 degrees Celsius, 50 grams would be right here. Now if you take a look at KCl, this is above the line for KCl. KCl can only handle about 40, 41. We're trying to put 50 in, so KCl would be saturated. In fact, about 9 grams of it will fall to the bottom. For KNO3, however, KNO3 can handle much more. It can handle probably about 75 at this temperature. So KNO3 will be unsaturated because it can handle 75. We're only putting in 50. And this is how you would answer a question about the solubility curve. We'll let you do this practice problem uh, on your own. And this completes for us lesson two of unit 13.